Uh, it, yeah, we're going to make it work manually. So what we're going to do is uh, you're going to hold the microphone up as she answers. Turn the, uh, the computer volume up as much as possible. And, I, and I'll start the questions if you would do me the honor and the World Regents class would do me the honor. Uh, so much revolutionary great things and exciting things are happening in Burma this year with you being released to your political party now being able to run for office and you running for office. Uh, I just want to know, because it's hard for us as outsiders to get this, why now? Why, why suddenly is the door being cracked open for freedom seemingly so quickly? What is it in 2011 that's changed? I think it's not a question of why now. It's something towards which we have been working for the last 23 years. So I think it's just our efforts being, uh, bearing fruit now. People think that everything happens suddenly. It's not like that. It's like the first blossom opening up. It's been a long time coming. And if you ask me, it couldn't have come sooner. In fact, it's rather late than early. And now we're going to just turn it over to students who have been dying to talk to you. Hello, and thank you so much for being here. As a leader of democracy in Burma, what does democracy mean to you and the people of Burma? And will it be the change that is needed for a positive future in Burma? Well, uh, to put it very simply, democracy means for me, and I think for those who are in the same movement as I am, a fine balance between liberty and security. We want to be free, but at the same time, we want to be secure. And we think that so far, democracy is the best system we know that can achieve both liberty and security for us. And this is why we want democracy, because it will guarantee us the kind of life that we want. But when I say guarantee, it does not mean that it will be there on a plate for us. We know that we have to work for it. We will be give, given opportunities to build the kind of lives we want for ourselves. That is what we're trying to do. Hello, and thank you for speaking with us. Um, what do you think the, will be the consequences of the developing Western support and approval of the Burmese government? Will, and how will this, um, excuse me, affect the Burmese government's willingness to continue reforming and its willingness to release more political prisoners in the near future? I think an intelligent engagement rated steps will help us a great deal because I think Calibre, that uh, the government of Burma wants to have good relations with the United States of America and other countries in the world. And I think uh, this is the right time for the international community to engage in a ca careful, calibrated way so that it will help along our process. Oh no, their grade is dependent on it. <laughs> Mingalava, uh, with respect to your recent meeting with Hillary Clinton, do you think Burma and U.S. are looking at better international relations soon? I hope so. I hope that relations between the United States of America and Burma will improve day by day so that we can have more meetings like that, like this, and perhaps in person rather than across the wires. I can see your hand. Mingalaba, Aung San Suu Kyi, General Neto Uba, I just have one question for you. Uh, how fast will um, foreign investment come in after sanctions are uh, lifted in Burma? And uh, again, Jesu Demare for speaking to us all. Well, it's not a, a, just, a, just a question of sanctions. I've spoken to a lot of businessmen, and what they want is to be sure that there's the right kind of economic climate in Burma. Uh, for, to, to, make the, to justify investment. So it's not just a matter of removing sanctions. There are other things necessary in Burma, such as good investment laws plus rule of law, so that 
these laws will be seen to protect those who want to come in and, in and do business here. So it's not just sanctions, it's other things as well. Hello. Uh, what books do you recommend for an aspiring political activist? Sorry, what, could you repeat the question? Uh, uh, <laughs> what books do you recommend for an aspiring political activist? What books? Well, uh, I think it depends on what kind of politics you're going to go in for. It, it just happens that about the first uh, book on politics I ever read was about somebody who was kept under solitary confinement for seven years. But perhaps that was just coincidence. And uh, that certainly prepared me for the kind of politics I got engaged in. But that may not necessarily prepare you for the kind of politics you would like to engage in. So I think uh, a broad knowledge of the world around you is really the best preparation for any kind of political life. I want to thank you so much for giving us this opportunity tonight. My question is, do you think President Obama has had a positive effect on American international relations, and how so? Well, yes, of course. But the, the very fact that in uh, the United States of America, somebody like President Obama, who one would have thought comes from an underprivileged uh, f section of society, can rise to be the, the president, that really improves the image of uh, the United States in a very great way. People like to see the underprivileged succeed. People like to see that there's an opportunity for everybody. It does not matter whether you come from a rich family or a poor family, or whether you're born into privilege, or whether you have to create your own way in life. People like to see uh, the fruits of endeavor really come to 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 uh, to how shall I put it to be realized they want to see that there are such things as genuine fruits of endeavor and I think this is what has uh, made the international community so happy about the success of President Obama we all feel that everybody can have a chance in this world Hi, and uh, thanks for taking your time to speak with us. My question is, you left home at a very young age and experienced a lot of hard times, but you stayed driven. Many students here and young people around the world can do great things, but we often lack focus or the proper inspiration. How do you stay so focused and motivated to achieve your goals? I think it has a lot to do with one's upbringing. I was brought, brought up to think that duty was one of the most important things in life. And perhaps this is out of fashion now. Perhaps this is no, no longer fashionable. Perhaps people do not think any longer that duty is important. And that really the most important thing is to enjoy yourself. But this is not how I was brought up. And throughout the years when I've had to face many difficulties, I was upheld by this conviction that nothing was more important in life than commitment to duty. And that, what, that was what kept me going. Um, I may be old-fashioned, but I think uh, you, you could try it. Try thinking of duty as the most important thing in, in your life. And I think you will find that it opens up a lot of vistas for you that you never realized before existed. It's not a narrowing process. It's, in fact, an opening up process. Hello, thank you for speaking to us today. And uh, my question would be, do you think that what happened in Burma lately is a result of the Arab Spring uprising? Thank you. Uh, no, I don't think it is a direct result of the Arab Spring uprising. Uh, but I think, of course, people in Burma have been aware of what is happening in the Arab world and in the rest of the world. As I said very early on, I think what has happened in Burma now is a result of what we have been trying to do for the last 23 years. I think in the end, hard work does pay. Hi. Um, 
Um, I was wondering, while you were in Burma, how did you get started in being recognized for your ideas and as a leader figure without um, little use of internet or telephones or technology? Thank you. You know, once upon a time, there were such things as books. I mean, there still <laughs> are now. And uh, I think I, I got to be known through the, some of the books I wrote and some of the uh, articles I wrote. And of course, even though there was no internet when I first started in the democracy movement, there was the radio and uh, some interviews that I, I had with various journalists. Did come out across the radio in different parts of the world and newspapers. Hi. If and, um, if and when a peaceful democracy is achieved in Burma, will that mean success to you, or will you continue to work on other goals either in Burma or abroad? When a peaceful transition to democracy has been affected, then, then I would feel that we have got over the first hurdle. Then there's the question of making sure that democracy stays in Burma and that democratic institutions are stabilized and strengthened. So it's going to be an unending process in a way. After all, you in the United States, your democracy is centuries old, as it were, but still you have to work at keeping it strong and making sure that uh, it fits in with the times. So we'll have to go on doing that. But I do look forward to the day when I can say, having established a sound democratic system, I can sit back and do what I want to do. Uh, hi. How did the assassination of your father many years ago drive you to fight even more for freedom and democracy in Burma? I never think of my father as somebody who was assassinated. I always think of him as somebody who used his life in the best way possible. And I must say that one of the, the things that I, I associate most with my father's assassination is the fact that those who were responsible for his assassination were given all the rights that they were entitled to that they enjoyed all the rights of justice. And that is something that I cherish very much. I would not like to think that anybody had suffered because of my father. First, I just want to say it's a complete honor to speak with you now. Uh, what was the moment that you realized this is what you had to do and that this was your calling? No, that's a very difficult question, because as I said earlier, I was brought up uh, to have a, a strong sense of duty. So at all times, I always felt that whenever there was a need to do anything for the country, I would have to do it. And in 1988, when uh, the people rose up uh, calling for democracy and freedom, it was natural for me to, to join them, because that I thought was the duty of every citizen in the country. Hi. Uh, my parents are about to take a world tour, and uh, my mom actually called me this morning to have me ask you um, what tourism is like in Burma right now, and is it something that you would encourage? <laughs> uh, well, we have brought out a tourist policy in Burma, and we want to encourage tourists to, uh, to try to stay in the smaller hotels where they will be um, helping enterprise, young en uh, entrepreneurs to, to get on with their business. We would like you to encourage a kind of ethical, environmentally friendly tourism. That would help us a great deal. And uh, when your parents are in Burma, do tell them to drop me a line. I'm going to have a DC today, and I'm here to Actually, I came to the U.S. in 2002, and I have a Burmese education of 
I was up to sixth grade, and I personally ex personally experienced some. Actually, there were a lot of uh, corruption within the educational system. My question to you is: If you do get if you do get elected to at the office, what are your plans to fix that kind of corruption, ma'am? Fixing corruption is a, a long and difficult business because it's not, not just a question of, of uh, bringing about laws that will punish those who are corrupt, or, and it's not simply a question of giving civil servants, including school teachers, uh, salaries that will enable them to lead, lead decent lives. It's also a question of change changing the mindset. For people who have got used to corruption for decades, they can't just overnight stop uh, looking upon bribes as a normal way of life. It comes become so normal for them that they don't even consider it as corruption. So it's going to be a, a long and uh, hard job cleaning up the whole country. We all have to work at it, and we have to work at it from different directions. We have to work at it uh, through rules and regulations. We also have to work at it through the participating, participation of the people, making it obvious that do, they do not like that kind of system. Uh, there are so many things to be done that, in fact, I'll have to ask you for suggestions and ideas as to how we should, we should go about it as quickly as possible. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk to us. Um, if your party is elected into office, what would be some of your first political actions? One of the, our first political actions would be to try to ensure that uh, the National Assembly, in which we hope to get some of our representatives, start working like a really democratic National Assembly, and that we will be able to table the kind of motions that will benefit the people. We are especially concerned about education, health, and of course, above all, the rule of law, without which nothing else can proceed. Uh, I, I have been reminded that for a democracy to work, there has to be a balance between the judiciary and the legislature and the executive, and that I should not think of the judiciary alone. This is true, but the judiciary is very important because unless there's rule of law and an independent judiciary, the people will never be secure. They will never know where they stand. They will never know when they will be punished and why. So we are going to work towards uh, strengthening democratic institutions and to uh, improving the health and education system in Burma, because this is what we need most of all at the moment. Uh, I know a lot of us are sympathetic to your cause, but it's difficult to tell how exactly we can help from here. How can we, as college students in the United States, help promote the cause of global democracy? Well, first of all, you're helping right now by getting in contact with me. I was very, very touched and very, very happy that you asked me to join you here like this. And also, I must add that I was very pleased that you had diff technical difficulties. It made us feel that we're not that far behind you after all. <laughs> and, uh, I hope lots and lots of you will come to us here and see what, how we are proceeding along our path to democracy. And by keeping in contact with us, I think you will find that there are many ways in which you can help us. And particularly, I would like you to help us with our education. Consider taking some Burmese students into your tech. Give us a few scholarships. And send us a few of your teachers, you know, like your geography professor. <laughs> How important do you think the feminine perspective is in politics, and do you think it could have a really good effect on a country if they have more women in politics? Oh, the, the more women anywhere, the better for the whole world. And, uh, <laughs> we're trying to get in as many, as many
many women into politics in Burma as possible. And as you know, I met Hillary Clinton recently, and she made me feel proud of women and of politicians. And that is what I want. People should be proud of women and of politicians. We'll give that to him. Hey, I, w I want to thank you for taking my question, but uh, the uh, Chinese government has allied themselves with the junta to some degree, and that's kind of impeded your movement's progress. Where do you see your relations with China going uh, and evolving as your movement gains speed and takes over in Burma? Well, Burma always has had a tradition of friendly relations with China. You mustn't forget that we're neighbors, and it's always important to keep on good terms with neighbors, especially as we are in the sort of position where we can't move away if we don't get on with each other. It's very important that we do get on with each other. And I'm sure that as we proceed towards democracy, we'll be able to strengthen and improve our relations with China. You mustn't forget that in the days when Burma had a democratic government, we had very good relations with China, and the democratic Burmese government was one of the first countries in the world to recognize the communist government of China back in the 1950s. So uh, there is a good, solid tradition of uh, friendship in spite of differences. Hello. Hi. Um, so when you look back on your life, what are the most important personal experiences that have had an impact on you? And what is your advice for the women in today's world? Well, one of the most important experiences of my life was going to university. The years that I spent at Oxford University as a student have been very good for me in many ways, not the least of which was that they provided me with very happy memories. And during those years when I was on my own, I could always draw on those memories to strengthen me with the realization that I have had much happiness in life. So first of all, I would like to remind you to make the best of your years at college. Don't waste them. And uh, with regard to uh, my position as a woman, what the most memorable part of my years was, I think it was the fact that I grew up with my mother. My father died when I was two, so I was brought up by my mother. And always that has affected the way in which I looked upon the role of women. I always thought it was perfectly natural for women to take the lead. You were put under house arrest a number of times and for many years. I'm just wondering how that, what that was like and what you did to remain optimistic about Burma's future while under house arrest. Thank you. Well, house arrest is not all that bad, particularly if you think of the fact that all my other colleagues who were arrested were put into prison rather than kept in their own homes. And also, you have to look at, uh, at the positive side of things. When I was under house arrest, I got a lot of rest, and I was able to read a great deal. Now that I'm out of house arrest, I hardly have time to read and not enough time to rest. So you can always look at the positive side of things. And of course, uh, when you are on your own, you really learn to know yourself. And that is one of the most important things in life. And that has helped me a lot with what I'm doing now. I think a lot of what I do now, I would not have been capable of doing if I had not been placed uh, in a position where I had to live with myself for about 15 years. Hello, um, what was or was there some kind of spark or what motivated you to um, get you started fighting for democracy in Burma? Well, I've, I've always uh, thought that you shouldn't just sit by and let things happen, especially when you think that something unjust is going on, something wrong is going on. I've always been one of those people. That is because of my mother's upbringing. When you think that something needs 
to be done, that you've got to get up and do it yourself instead of waiting for other people to do it. And when everybody joined the part in it as well, and that was how it came about. I Great silence. I can't hear a word. We just lost you for a minute, but we think we got you back. Hi. Good morning, and thank you for speaking with us today. Uh, I was wondering what the rest of the world can take away from the events and struggle in Burma. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I think the, the rest of the world could think in this way, that you can always help other people. One of the great uh, pillars of strength for us throughout these years have been the, has been the support of the international community. Many times when I felt that our movement for democracy had been abandoned or forgotten, suddenly there would be proof from distant countries in the world that we had not been forgotten. And that is so so strengthening, so encouraging to know that you have not been forgotten. So if you would all make sure that you do not forget those who need your help, uh, this is a great lesson you could take with you, you, that you can always help others, however far away they may be. Hello again. Uh, my high school government book said, when a nation begins to value security over freedom, it begins its decline. How far along this path has the U.S. gone? What can we do to preserve the balance of security and freedom? Well, as I said earlier, I, I think that the, the democracy is the best uh, system because it uh, achieves a good balance between security and freedom. And uh, I think it is up one uh, outweighing the other. As long as you are alert to that danger, you will always be able to avoid it. So keep on the alert, keep on your toes, and make sure that your government does not do what is not good for your country. Hello. Um, first of all, thank you so much for being such an inspiration to everybody and all the women in the entire world. And my question is that um, your father was assassinated and your colleagues went through so many pains and hurts. Um, and uh, I was just wondering how you find the strength to carry on and um, get, like, stick with the cause knowing what has happened to the things that have happened around you. Well, I think precisely because of the things that have happened around me. After all, as you mentioned, my father was assassinated by a political rival. And of course, that strengthened me in the convi conviction that we needed a system where you could bring about political change without violence. And the fact that so many of my colleagues were put into pr prison convinced me that we needed a system where people were free to think as they pleased, that where uh, a system system where there will be no prisoners of conscience. So all the, uh, all the bad things, if you like, that happened to me simply convinced me that we had to work for a better world, and that helped me a great deal. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Um, <laughs> Uh, I was, this has been a very good year for the Middle East and in terms of democracy and I was wondering what you think that the Arab Spring and democracy, like the future for democracy in the world, including Burma, and, yeah. Well, manage to work out this balancing act properly, then I think we will proceed towards a better, more wholesome world. Uh, 
Uh, well, uh, Dao Aung San Suu Kyi, thank you so, so much for sharing your time and your passion with us and the entire world, um, and for showing this young generation of Americans that anything is possible and that it only takes one person with courage and determination to actually change the entire world. Yes, please, absolutely. They, they, they get so excited around you, as do I. My heart's pitter-patter, all right? Um, but I did want to close by saying, uh, no matter what the future holds for Burma, uh, please know this. Uh, you are not alone, and you have never been alone. And there are millions and millions of Americans just like me and the Hokie Nation behind me and folks all over our country that are rooting for you and praying for you and the NLD and for all Burmese to hopefully someday very soon gain their dream of freedom. Now you can go. Thank you so, so very much. Have a great day, because now it's morning there, so you get to go to work all day. So thanks again for getting up so early for us. Thank you very much, and I hope that one day I'll be able to come to Virginia Tech. Thank you. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Well, how about that? Um, what do you want? Do what? 100 people? 100 people. Oh, we're watching live stream, gotcha. That went great. Aight! Aung San Suu Kyi, aight! Aight!